All right, now I want to talk about the function methods call, apply, and bind. These are three methods that we can call when we are working with functions. Now, I have a sample file here. I've got an object called Bob, or a variable called Bob, which contains a function. And then I've got an object called Bill, which contains an object. And inside this object, I've got two properties, which are strings, and one property, which is a function. Now, just average everyday JavaScript, I can call the function Bob, and then you can see it's expecting me to pass in two parameters. It wants a number and a string. So we can say, fine, I'm going to call one, and I'm going to pass in the string hello. There we are. Now, if I run this, function Bob is going to run. Because I've put the parentheses after the name, it's going to call the function and say, I want this to run. And inside here, we have the keyword this. Now, here, just calling the function Bob directly, this is going to default to the global object because I'm not using use strict. I've got the pragma commented out here. So the keyword this is going to default to the global object, which is going to be the window. So we jump over to the browser and we run this page. There we are. Bob, one, hello, and window. That's the this object. That's fine. And in the bill object, if I wanted to call the my method, this function right here, we can type bill dot my method. And then it's expecting one thing to be passed to it, which my variable here is expecting a function. So I'm going to pass a function to my method that I want to be called. Okay, great. Let's say it's the function Bob. So I put in the name of the function that I want called, and that's great, but what about these parameters? There's no way for me to pass in these parameters. So I can call this, comment that one out, refresh it, jump back to the browser, run it, build my method is the function, and we're passing in Bob as the function. We're saying to run. Oh, we're not telling Bob to run. So we've passed in Bob, but we haven't told it to run. So options are standard everyday JavaScript, just like that. You add the parentheses onto the end of it, and we can call the function Bob. Refresh. There we are. Bob. But those are undefined. Window is still this object, but undefined for the two parameters because we haven't passed them in. Now, I can put them in here like this, but I need to know ahead of time what those parameters are going to be, and I have to have those hard-coded here inside of my method. Not a fantastic way to do this. So the function object has these built-in methods, call, apply, and bind. These are three ways that we can tell a function we want to run, and we can pass in various arguments to them, and we also get to denote what the value of this is going to be. So what is the context for this function running? All right, so let's try one of these out. I'm going to start with call. So we're going to say that bill.myMethod dot call. So I'm going to call this function. Or sorry, we'll start with um, start with a simpler example. We'll start with Bob. Here I'm saying I want Bob to run. That's what call says. And then the first argument for call is what's the this object? What is the context? So I can say Bill. This object right here, this is the context for this function to run. Inside of this function, if you use the keyword this, it's going to point to bill. And then after that, we can list off any arguments that we want to pass in. So I could say I'm going to pass in the number two and I'm going to pass in the string goodbye. Come back here, refresh. There we are. So Bob and two and goodbye. So this is the Bob function running. The number two and the string goodbye were passed in. And then the this happens to be our object bill. 
this object right here. That's what this becomes. So this is the context for calling our function. There is an apply method where we can do the same sort of thing. We specify that this object, you pass in your parameters like that, but these two, um, these two parameters that we're passing in, these will be combined into a single object. It's going to be an array of the parameters. And that's the difference between call and apply. I want to use these two values, so I could do it like that. There's the three high and the bill object. So both of these are being called. Or alternatively, if you have a variable somewhere which holds the contents, which you are adding and removing, you're using push and pop and shift and unshift to update the values that are inside this array, we can just pass the array like that. Refresh. You can see it's the exact same thing here. Whether it's an external variable being put in or you put the array right here. And then call does the same thing, but you specify one after another what these are going to be. Okay, now, if I were to call bill my method, now it's expecting a function, fine, I'll pass in Bob, but then I'm going to pass in a couple of other, th other things as well that we haven't specified here. So I'm going to pass in for and chow. I'm calling this function. It's expecting a function to be passed in. I'm passing in Bob. I want Bob to be called. So we know from before we could do this, but instead of doing that, I'm going to use function dot apply to call the function Bob. That's what's going to be fn here. So we're saying bob.apply, just like we did right here. The this object, well, we can do the same thing as we did before. We're going to pass in the bill object. That will be our this context. Now, right here, the for and the chow. I want to put those in. Now, I don't have variables here that are containing these, but we can get at those values. There is a built-in keyword arguments. This is the array of everything being passed in. This is number zero, this is number one, and this is number two. So this is the array of things being passed in. Those are the arguments. So arguments one, So let n for number be that. Let s be the string. So that'll be arguments number two. And then we're passing in n and s as the array of arguments. Now we could have also done this with call. It would have looked almost the same. Bill comma n comma s like that. These are doing the same thing. I'm going to comment one of them out, but they're doing the exact same thing. We're calling the function Bob. Fn is the function Bob, because that's what's being passed here to Fn. So we're calling that function. We're saying the context, the this object, is going to be Bill, which is our object right here. And then N and S are going to be the remaining parameters that we passed in, the arguments in position 1 and 2. All right, so let's comment these out. So all that's going to happen is we're going to call Bill's my method, pass in Bob as the function, for and chow as the number in the string, and we're going to call it like this. Refresh, and there we are. Bob was called. Number four and chow were passed in. So Bob was called. Number four string chow were called, and that this object is bill. There's our object bill. So that's call and that's apply. The third 
um, method that we have for functions is called bind. It does pretty much the same thing as call and apply. The difference is that you can save it in a variable to use later on. So I'm just going to move that down a little bit. I can call Bob and I can bind. I pass in the this object and then I pass in all of my arguments that I want to pass in. So Bill is the context that I want, or this could be any other object that we wanted. Bill is the context for calling Bob. Inside of Bob, Bill will be this. So right here, that's going to be Bill. And then other arguments that we want to pass in. So number and string, let's say five and hasta la vista. There we are. Okay. Now if I run this, nothing's showing up. And that's because the difference with bind and call and apply is that bind prepares this function to be called later. So it says, okay, Bill is going to be the this context for calling Bob. These are the parameters that are going to be passed into the function. But instead of running it right away, what bind does is it passes us back a copy of the function. So if I said let Fred equal bob.bind, Fred is now a copy of this function where Bill has been attached as the this context. So when I call Fred, there we are. The 5 and the hasta la vista were passed in as the number and the string. Bill was used as the context. You can see it was Bob being called. Bob, 5, hasta la vista, and Bill was the this context. So everything we defined here, this returned a copy to Fred. Now, if there was an additional parameter, something else you wanted to pass in, maybe there was a property x and you wanted to pass in a value for the property x, you could do it like that. And there we are. There is the property x being passed in as that final parameter. So it allows us to build a partial application. So we take a function we run it within a certain context, we pass some information to it, and it gives us back a copy of that function with that, basically a closure created with that information stored inside that we can then call upon later and pass additional information which will be used inside the function. So that is call, apply, and bind. Three methods that you have available to you with every function. Hope that's helped. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.